All right, I want to play something for you. I've been working on this for a long time. It's just what I've been working on lately, though. I haven't played it in years. That was uh, intro, the intro to Flight of the Bumblebee. Here's the next part. Oof. That was terrible. <laughs> That's terrible, but that was the next part of Flight of the Bumblebee. Um, and I ran out of breath. I was so lazy in the beginning and played too loud. And then I uh, had to compensate by circular breathing. But once I circular was circular breathing, yeah, for me, I can only do uh, my embouchure. My, my embouchure starts to fall apart if I circular breathe while moving around and doing things. And so I can only do it for a while and things get bad. <clears throat> circular breathing is not actually that hard. That's the funny part, right? Um, people think it's this magic trick. Let me tell you how I learned how to circular breathe. I learned how to circular breathe when I had a friend back when I was in college who wrote a piece of music for like 25 didgeridoos. And he handed everybody he knew a didgeridoo and said, blur, you got one week to learn how to play this. He handed it to me, right? He gave me two. He said, you might need both. And since you're a trumpet player, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you two because it's probably going to be easy for you. So I had one week to learn how to play didgeridoo, and then I did that recording. And by the end, I was pretty good at circular breathing and pretty good at dig didgeridoo. And that's how I learned that skill. And then I applied it to trumpet, and it works. It's useful, actually. Ah, let me do that again. I did it again in the end, and that was terrible. <laughs> I tear that. I played that awful. <laughs> you need to go to the next video because that was not a good rendition. Go watch Rafael Mendez play this tune, or Wynton Marsalis, or well, let me tell you a story. So, uh, when I was in high school, I had a version of the great trumpet player Doc Severinsen playing this piece, and it was on this compilation that he put out of classical classics like Carnival of Venice and Carmen. It was gorgeous and I listened to it all the time because I was a young trumpet player and Doc Severinsen was a badass. My friend David, who is like my rival, like I mean to tell you the truth to tell you the truth he was my rival but I wasn't really his rival if you know what I mean you know kind of like how um Good Times thinks McDonald's is its rival, but McDonald's doesn't take the time to think that Good Times is their rival. Anyway, he's got a version of uh, Wynton Marsalis, the other great trumpet player, doing basically the same tunes, including Flight of the Bumblebee. So we get in this fight, because I love Doc's version so much. Fuck Wynton. And David is like, Wynton's the best trumpet player who ever lived. Derp, derp. Right? And he thinks that that's better, and he was wrong, and I was right. So in any case, you know, if you wanted to hear a great version, you could probably go to Doc and not to Witten, because he sucks. <laughs> I got that part right. <laughs> that's the next part, and I got it right. I didn't miss one note, except for one thing. I'm pretty sure that most people play it the way I did it. But technically, it's not right, because the way you're supposed to do it is like this. See? Right? That's triple tonguing. The way you do it in your mouth when you're doing that is da da ga 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 da da I don't do it that way though, because I can't go fast enough. And I've been working on it for 30 years and I still can't 
my triple tonguing isn't even close to being fast. It's fast enough to be useful and for some things. But this shit, you know who was crazy at, at, at uh, triple con tonguing. And he played this tune was Rafael Mendez, like the best Mexican trumpet player who ever lived, probably the most famous. And if you've ever heard mariachi music, you know that that's a thing, right? Being the best Mexican player is not a small thing because they play that instrument. Anyway, that's another guy that you could go and listen to if you want to hear a great version that's, you know, not the same as mine. I got to turn the page. I haven't, I haven't memorized it. I used to have it memorized, but not now. do that part good you know of course if you wanted to hear the best it's probably maurice andre the great classical trumpet player he'd play this stuff and not only would he get it right he'd be like crying because he was so good I'm going to start over. I'm pissed off. I got close. I got close. Just a little more air. I'm just blowing too hard. And it's a large bore instrument. If it was a medium bore instrument, it wouldn't need as much air, but there's a large bore instrument. And I'm going to blame my $3,000 trumpet on my inability to play this piece, because obviously it's its fault. This thing's a piece of shit, right? <clears throat> got a little got a little passionate there and lost my mute. It's actually that tonguing part that's the hardest. This chromatic stuff, I need to have better control of the instrument, but ultimately it's just chromatic scales, which isn't that hard. Mm. This is the fun part because it's a little celebration. <laughs> yeah, you hear that shit? <laughs> Now, if you want to hear this again, and you think that um, Flight of the Bumblebee is a lovely uh, song played on trumpet or cornet, technically speaking, because we usually do it on cornet, you've got the following options. You could go buy the, epi the, the version by Doc Severinsen. It's good. You could go buy the version by Wynton Marsalis. It's awful. Tongue completely sucks. You could go find one by Maurice Andre. It'll make you cry. Or um, Rafael Mendez. It'll blow your fucking socks off. And what's cool is that each one of those great masters puts their own spin on, on the piece and other, everything that they play. And so being listening to more than one is actually worth your time if you if you take this stuff seriously. But to tell you the truth, the one thing, despite their differences, the one thing that those four guys making those four recordings of this piece of music have in common is that they all suck and you should listen to me instead. <laughs> 